Howdy, and welcome to today's top five. Y'all, I've got top five with Steven, who drove to our open house from California. Yep. So he drove all the way from the Bay Area. 2,700 miles. And on the way, car broke down. He ended up having to sell that car and buy a new car to make it to the open house, y'all. So that is pure dedication. If you people who say, you know, oh, I'm a few hours away, I can't make an open house. This guy drove from the other side of the country. Yep. So you should definitely try to make it to some of the open houses. Steven, how long have you been growing Japanese maples? Um, I got my first Japanese maple in June of 2023, which doesn't seem that long ago because it's not. And how many Japanese maples do you have now? Um, around 100 and after this open house, I'll have about 120. So for all of y'all maple fanatics out there, the maple mafia, this is a man of our own heart here. He's a guy who's caught the maple bug, loves Japanese maples. And today we're bringing you Steven's top five Japanese maples. So what you got at number five? At number five, this is an interesting one. I have Dragon Master. So Dragon Master was one initially that you know I'd seen and I was I, no, nothing never really caught my eye. And then in the um, 2023 Japanese Maple Swap that the uh, Mr. Maple Friends Facebook page did, I got that as my mystery tree, and it's just kind of grown on me since. It's surprisingly sun tolerant. I have it in about five hours of, of kind of full sun from, you know, about 10 to three o'clock in, in the California. The Bay um, Area. The Bay Area. And I'm, I'm further inland from the Bay Area. So we get some days over 100 out there and it holds up pretty well. It has some really nice color and just that like really that cascading habit is really cool. Yeah, that's a selection we found here at Mr. Maple. It's part of our Area 51 collection. We call them maples that are out of this world. And then it became part of our Pendulous Treasure Collection because it's extremely cascading. It's in that Naka Kamado Weeping legacy. So it comes down from the lineage of Naka Kamado Weeping and it has that yellow orange color, orange in the spring, then to the yellow color with the orange new growth. I mean, it, that is one that I was like, it, it's next level. And it's a plant that is really cool. And it's pretty cool to see it coming in at your number top five. Yeah, and I got in a hanging basket, so I get to get right up close to it without it being that old of a tree, so. And that's the way people don't think about it much, about hanging baskets. We've promoted that a lot here on the Mr. Maple Show. We went to Brian Rule's home, showed his hanging baskets, and I think a lot of people uh, started, started to catch on more and more. We saw that in Japan, and we saw that at, at Kobayashi Mumiji Inn. They were doing that with Rayus, and we're like, why not more varieties? This is awesome. Yeah, I've got it next to a red dragon. So I think it's kind of a fun name combo and they kind of both have, you know, the red dragon doesn't cascade as much, but it's a nice like color combo. It's a nice name combo. It's a good set to have next to each other. Oh yeah, for sure. Coming at number four, what do you got, Steven? At number four, I have Ilarian. It's actually the first tree I ever ordered from Mr. Maple. And the pink variegateds in general are some of my absolute favorites. I love all of them. But Ilarian just continues to be like probably the most impressive of all of them. It comes out with the most pink, the most white, and it keeps it the longest for everything I have. I still have some even now in, we're filming this in September, early September, that, you know, it's got leaves that are almost all pink and all white. Still. Yeah. That's a selection by Talon Buchholz. It was named after one of his workers and he has these rising star series. They're plants that he, puts all around the nursery of seedlings from who knows what. And he told his workers to go out and find something cool. And they went and they found this tree and came back. And Alarian was like, this is the one I like. And Talon's like, well, I'm gonna name it after you. He said the kid was hardworking. He said the kid, you know, was just an amazing worker and just a all around great person. And he's like, this tree reminds me of you. And he actually sent me in a box, Alarian, and I remember opening it up and it was just like this two or three gallon tree and it was just pure white. And I was just like, that's insane. I, I couldn't believe how pink and white it could get. I think that's why Talon was kind of bragging because of how amazing, I mean, it, it can really put some of the other pink and white trees to shame with how much variegation yeah. is on there. And if you ever want to get more variegation on those styles, stay away from the lots of nitrogen and you can prune them back in late February to promote new growth. And when you do that, you can get more and more variegation on it. If you see it flush out with some green color, give it a pruning then, and you can see the next flush of growth, which will happen soon after, will have tons of variegation on it. I mean, for me, Alarian, that, that tree's a rock star. It is. It's 
If you're looking, if you're looking, you just need to get some pink in the garden. I think a Larian's probably the best option. So what do you have as your number three? At number three, I have Vercades Jackus Potus. So the Cestifolium group in general is probably my favorite. It's just super unique. That feather leaf is totally a different texture than everything else. And Vercades just combines that with super dynamic colors. It's like you always changing. It goes from like this like pink to this kind of pink orange to red, dark red. And then it gets some gr various colors of green. And you just kind of see all the way from the top to the bottom, it's just a different color at each step. Yeah, as a selection by the Vercade family, that's the same family that introduced so many rare conifers. They also introduced the variety Crimson Queen. I mean, so this family has had their hand in horticulture everywhere. And Dave Vercade found it. And his daughter is Jackie. And uh, Jackus Potus is kind of something like, you know, a little playful name he had with his daughter who you know, would help him out in the nursery sometimes. You know, plant pots, Jackus potus, and it became Vercade Jackus potus. I remember seeing this tree in New Jersey, and Dave was selling this, and like, we got a plant that was about this big, carried it back in a cup holder all the way from New Jersey. I mean, literally, the pot was about an inch by inch, like the root system. Wow. And came back, you know, put it in a pot, grew it off, and got that tree into the nursery trade in a bigger way. And to me, it's just such a cool tree because it goes through all those colors with that Cecilifolium leaf structure. I love the angel feathers, I often call them, uh, group because it is, they have this heavily divided leaf that looks like almost each lobe of the leaf mm -hmm. is its own leaf because they, each lobe of the leaf has its own leaf stalk. Yeah. And it's so attractive, it's so unique. It gives like a soft feel yeah, to a fluffy, tree that kinda. can get a little more upright. And, uh, I mean, to me, Vercades Jackus Potus, that's a real winner. Yeah, it was hard not to, it, it was between that and Orange, or Orange Hagaroma, Hans, Hanezu Hagaromo. Yeah. That was my other one that was in there. Really cool tree as well, but I think Vercades just has that additional splash of color. That's for sure. So what do you have as your number two Japanese man? At number two, I have Mirte. Is there Shira Shirwanum Yeah. Mirte. Kind of a, a more uncommon one, not one that you see very often. Um, I was at a buddy's house who grafts trees um, and I saw that, I'm like, that is super cool. And ever since I got it, it's just grown on me. It's, it has this really fantastic dark red color that with these like really cool green uh, variegate or reticulation in it. Yeah. And it's just really dynamic, kind of a, a more subtle, elegant form of Asia Shirushwanam versus like moonrise where it's moonrise is really dynamic i i like the shape too like i was looking at emory davis we did a podcast with emory davis in france the other day and i was looking at some of the specimens out in the landscape and mirte has this unique spreading out habit like where it grows it starts arching out and as it develops into a specimen it becomes more showy because it has a unique habit itself it is a selection by our friend at esfeld nursery cor van geldren and I mean, it is just a rock star. It was named after his, his daughter, Mirte. I mean, he also has Ruben, Ariadne, and a bunch of other ones named after his kids. And so it's cool because, you know, Matt went to go visit him and he was, you know, at the nursery and he's like, oh, you know, I know the tree named after you. I know the tree named after you. I know the tree named after you. And that is just a killer tree that I don't think gets enough praise. Yeah. I mean, it, it's definitely coming in the podcast. If you haven't seen it yet, check out our podcast that's airing very soon with Emery Davis. Emery Davis, Maple Society addict, lives in Paris, France. He's got a huge, huge garden. And we definitely talk about Mirte during that because it's a really cool tree. Sweet, I'm looking forward to that. So what do you have as your number one, Jeff? All right, so I think so far, you know, I've had a lot of dynamic colors. I've had some interesting textures and shapes. So I think my number one is a little bit of a surprise, Calico. So calico is much more of kind of a, you know, you look at it at, for the first time and, you know, it kind of looks a little bit more standard as a nice lighter, lighter green leaf. But what I, I just really like it, it's a little denser. It's not like quite that Macaulay Atsabusa type density, but it kind of creates a larger tree, but has some really cool dense density to it. The leaves are just kind of a really nice, they're a little smaller, but they're not like these little mini leaves. Um, the bark is cool. It's just like a whole thing that, I don't know, I really like it. And, I re and the fall color, that's where it gets its name, if I'm not mistaken, because it has that 
Calico of colors. Yeah. Yeah, you get like yellows, oranges, reds, all across the tree at the same time. Uh, Which that's kind of unusual for yeah. a palmatum. It, it, it has almost like a fall color that you think of about on some of the japonicums, but on a palmatum. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. My, my brother-in-law actually got a really large specimen of calico. One of our stock plants we had dug up into a B&B, &B, and he got the pick of the litter of all of our B&Bs before we ever made them available at open house. And he came through and he was like, that's the one I want right there. And it was calico because yeah. it has that brighter color to it. And when he started doing research about it and learning about the fall color, I mean, he was just, he's just blown, he was just blown away that like how much better this tree was than he even realized. Yeah. And it just had, it just makes a sort of perfectly shaped tree and that lighter color gives you a lively feel. But then when the fall hits, it's just the dynamic change of a fall happening. And that calico of colors, man, that, that that's a killer number one. Yeah. It's one you don't see often in people's top fives. It's underappreciated, but I'm telling you, when we list them on Mr. Maple, they sell out. And there's a reason for that. It's a, it's a killer tree. Yeah. So, y'all, that was Steven's top five Japanese maples. He drove all the way from California to give you a top five and to come shop here at the Mr. Maple Open House. Y'all, tell him in the comments what you think about his top five. And take care, God bless, and have a great day.